In this video, we're going to look at a topic which is really fascinating and can sometimes seem quite counterintuitive. And that is our feelings, our emotional reactions are a choice. See, often we like to think that what it is we feel in our body, our emotional reaction is autonomous, it's automatic and it's biological. And because it's automatic and biological, it must be signaling something that I need to be aware of. But what I'm going to talk about is that this reaction of emotions, this feelings that we feel in our body, we have in fact been taught what it is to feel. So I'll never forget sitting, watching a current affairs program when I was really young, nine or ten years old with my father and my whole family. And this particular snippet was about a homosexual male or gay male couple. And there was a shot of them holding hands and my dad looks at the screen and he just does this. Ugh, sis, gross. And in that moment, what is communicated to me as a young child is, oh, that's bad. Don't, don't, don't do that, right? What my dad was happening for my father was a disgust reaction, right? And this reaction is incredibly powerful, the disgust reaction. And here's the thing. The disgust reaction has been used historically to create and sustain social hierarchies. What do I mean by that? We have been taught by our history, by our parents, and we have also caught what to find disgusting. Women's menstrual cycles and menstrual blood and any discussions around menstruation, female breastfeeding, homosexual or queer couples, interracial couples, all of these things are just an example of a disgust reaction. The thing that, oh, no, ooh, that's gross. And we need to understand why. Disgust has been used really sophisticatedly in our past to other when something is disgusting or we're taught that something is disgusting, it gives us the permission to say, you stay over there, we stay over there. And it creates a moral high ground. Because if you're disgusting, then I'm not disgusting. We now have this hierarchy. And what happens when we have a hierarchy? Well, it means I don't have to engage with you. I don't have to employ you. I don't have to promote you. I don't have to like you. In fact, I can inflict physical violence upon you. That social hierarchy is incredibly, incredibly important. And all it is based on, right? One of the tools is that disgust reaction. So this is why this is challenging. Because like I said, when something happens in our body, like when I'm hungry, I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. My body's giving me a message. I must eat. I go eat. We think it's such a natural thing. We think it's such a biological thing. We trust it implicitly. But when we have an emotional reaction, the same thing happens. We're like, oh, I find that disgusting. Therefore, there is a lesson to be learned here. I need to do something. But our emotions are not the same as those fundamental survival biological aspects of us like hunger and those elements that our emotions are in fact taught much like attraction we are taught who to find attractive so something's happening in my body a sexual reaction perhaps but i am taught what and who to find attractive it is the same for most of our emotional feelings so very often people feel like or well, they say that what it is i feel informs what it is that I believe. Because if I feel that that's disgusting, then I believe it is disgusting. It is the other way around. Then in fact, what it is we believe informs what it is that we feel. And what it is that we believe, we have been taught. We've been taught about social hierarchies. We've been taught to believe that we're better than or less than, that some things are disgusting and some things are not, that some things should be avoided and some things are not. And they're very effective, right? Because when we believe it and we then feel it in our bodies, it sustains that hierarchy. Why on earth would I enter into a homosexual couple when there's such a strong reaction from my father? I'm never going to do it. And that sustains the social hierarchy. It sustains who it is we see as valuable and who it is that we don't. Our feelings are a choice. They are not autonomous. It is not biological. It is entirely constructed. So what do we do about this, right? Well, the first thing that I want us to think about when you have a reaction is to try and name it. What am I feeling? Okay, it's disgust or it's shame or it's repulsion, whatever it is. Let's name what it is that I'm feeling. And then to ask, 
where does this feeling come from? Where was I taught to have this feeling? Was it in school? Was it in a WhatsApp group? Was it in my home? Was it in a church? Where was I taught to have this feeling? The next question I want you to ask is, what is the purpose of me feeling this feeling? Because it has a purpose, right? Oh, it's to dissuade me from going into that. It's to shame another person. And then for you to ask, does this purpose still serve me? My family? My inclusion journey? Does this still serve me? And if it doesn't, there's a really important question that I'd love for you to ask yourself, and it's this. If this reaction no longer serves me, what can I replace this emotion with? Maybe it's a curiosity to find out more. Maybe it's a question. Maybe it's an unconditional love and acceptance. Whatever it is, how can we, by choice, remove that emotion that has been planted there by choice with something way more conscious? Our feelings, our emotions are not autonomous. They are a choice. And we can choose to feel different things. And this is the encouragement when we are trying to enter into spaces to create a sense of social cohesion.